Hello, my name is Paul Goldsmith from the Burmad Applications Division. In this video, we're going to talk about commissioning and maintaining the Burmad PRV pressure reducing station with a relief valve. This pressure control station should be used where there is a possibility of damaging overpressure to the consumer pipeline. Before we begin, I'd like to present the major components of this station. When the upstream isolation valve is opened, water first encounters the main strainer, trapping any debris or foreign objects. The water then enters the Burmad 720 pilot operated reducing valve. It is with this valve that we can adjust the downstream pressure to the exact pressure requirement. From here, if the downstream isolation valve is open, the water will go on to the consumer. Downstream of the pressure reducing valve, we have a pressure relief valve that will open to prevent any overpressure to the consumer line. Also in this installation, we have two pressure gauges, upstream and downstream of the 720 pressure reducing valve. Commissioning procedures should be performed when initially opening and operating a station, either for the first time as a new installation or after intrusive system maintenance. Before operating the system for the first time, it is imperative to flush the pipelines. This ensures that the system is free from any debris that can cause damage or even render it inoperable. After flushing, ensure that the main strainer and the valve's control loop filters are clean. Next, observe the station's installation and make sure that all parts are firmly secured and in place. Proceed by verifying that the upstream and downstream isolation valves are closed and that you have typical upstream pressure. Now, open the ball valves on the pressure reducing valves control trim. Next, ensure that the service valves on all pressure gauges are open. Note the pilot levels of the pressure reducing valve and the relief valve are both set at the factory. You can check the factory pilot levels by reading the label on both pilot covers. Here's the label on the pressure reducing valve and here's the label on the relief valve. Before introducing flow to the station, you need to make sure that the preset pressure levels are compatible with your downstream pressure requirements. If this is the case, you're fine. Otherwise, you will need to adjust the pilots to the required level. If you need to adjust the pilots, all you need to do at this point is to prepare for it by completely unscrewing counterclockwise the reducing valve's pilot adjustment screw until it becomes loose. This will cause the valve to close when water is introduced, allowing us to recalibrate from zero pressure to the required value. You should also completely tighten the relief valve's pilot adjustment screw by turning it clockwise until the end. Again, these steps are only necessary if you need to adjust the unit's downstream pressure level. All right, now slowly fully open the upstream isolating valve to fill the station with water. Proceed by partially opening the downstream isolation valve. At this stage, if you haven't released the pilot's adjustment screw of the reducing valve, the consumer's line connected to the station will fill in a slow and controlled manner. All you need to do now is to check that the downstream pressure is compatible with your requirements. And when pressure has stabilized, continue to fully open the downstream isolation valve. On the other hand, if you're prepared for pressure calibration by releasing the pilot screw of the reducing valve or tightening the pilot screw of the relief valve, water won't flow through the station. The reason is that in this case, the pressure reducing valve will have closed shortly after introducing flow to the station. Now let's calibrate the downstream pressure to the desired level. Note that calibration cannot be done without flow. To simulate actual conditions, you should have a typical consumer line open while calibrating. This should give you an average system flow rate. If this is not achievable, a minimal flow rate will suffice, though it's not ideal. Begin the pressure calibration process by slowly turning the reducing valve's pilot adjustment screw clockwise until you hear the valve opening or feel a resistance at the pilot adjustment screw. At this point, the downstream consumer's pipeline will start to fill. When the consumer's pipeline is full, slowly turn the adjustment screw clockwise to increase downstream pressure 
while monitoring the downstream pressure gauge until you reach the required pressure. To reduce the downstream pressure, follow the same process, but in this case, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise. Once you have reached the desired downstream pressure, close the pilot adjustment screw locking nut and replace the protective cover. Whether or not you performed recalibration, the next step is to remove any residual air from the pressure reducing valves control loop and the chamber. This ensures a more stable and positive pressure control. To vent air from the valve's control loop, loosen the tube eye bolt attached to the valve cover at the highest point of the valve's control chamber. You may notice air exiting the eye bolt. As soon as you get a flow of water without air, retighten the tube fitting eye bolt. The final stage in the commissioning process is setting the pressure level of the relief valve. First off, Make sure that the inlet pressure is at the required system level. Now start to slowly unscrew, counterclockwise, the relief valve's pilot screw until the valve opens slightly. When this happens, you should notice a small leak from the valve outlet. Once the leak starts, close the pilot adjustment screw clockwise, three quarters of a turn. This adjusts the relief valve to a set point approximately one bar above the system pressure. Note that each complete turn of the adjusting screw changes the valve's set point pressure by approximately two bars or 30 psi. Now I'd like to briefly discuss the necessity of proper drainage. When opened, the relief valve might discharge a large amount of water. Without proper drainage, the water might flood and damage property in the surrounding area. To prevent this situation, we at Burmad recommend to connect the relief valve outlet to a drainage infrastructure. Now let's discuss maintenance procedures for the Burmad PRV pressure reducing station with the relief valve. Note that your schedule for preventative maintenance depends on the actual conditions of use and the station's environment. Here we discuss a schedule suited to a valve operating under average conditions. On a weekly basis, perform a visual inspection of the station and check for leaks or external damage. In addition, observe the unit's pressure gauges to make sure that the pressures upstream and downstream are as they should be. Once a year, close both the upstream and downstream isolation valves and clean the main strainer and the valve control loop filter. Every three to five years, inspect the internal conditions of the pressure reducing valve. Now let's summarize what we covered today. In this video, you learn how to commission and maintain the Burmad PRV pressure reducing station with a relief valve. You saw how to prepare the station for first time use and how to calibrate the downstream pressure and relief valve to meet your specific requirements. We at Burmad hope you find this information useful and invite you to contact us with any questions or issues you encounter. Thanks for watching.